Hi guys, I'm Dave, and welcome back to Beer Virtually. Today we have another limited release from Boulevard Brewing. I've really come to like Boulevard. Um, the calling is definitely up there as one of my favorites, and I've been curious to try this one. This is called Rye on Rye from Boulevard. This is part of the Smokehouse series, which I think is what they call their limited release series. This has the Smokehouse series bottle cap. So the rye on rye, the name, means, oh, it's a great color. The name means, it's almost the color of a barley wine. So rye on rye means it's a rye ale that is aged in rye barrels. Oh, it's a really kind of almost reddish brown color. It smells a lot like uh, barley wine also. Oh, that is delicious. It tastes like a barrel aged barley wine. I, I'm digging this for sure. So 12% uh, ABV, it's definitely up there. Proper glass is a tulip glass, which I'm kind of surprised. So usually when you have a barrel-aged beer, it goes in a snifter. Similar because whiskey goes in a snifter. So if it's in a barrel, it comes out of a barrel, it goes in a snifter. But they recommend a tulip glass for this one. I kind of disagree. I mean, who am I to disagree with them? But I, I think a snifter, especially at 12%, is the way, is the proper glass for this. Thirty-three ABV uh, IBUs, which I think is fairly accurate. I'd maybe go a little closer to forty, just based on taste. But I I, I think that's a it's de de definitely below forty is is the mouth taste. Um, what else about this? Uh, let's see what else we got for notes. Fifteen ninety nine a four pack, so not cheap. But I think this is pretty good. I would say that's almost the uh, um, almost a decent value for this. So they use Templeton rye barrels. And if I'm not mistaken, Templeton rye is what the gangster Al Capone used to like to drink, if I'm not mistaken. So this beer has two kinds of malted rye, and then it has citra and Styrian golding hops that provide a dry finish. I don't know if I'm really getting a dry finish. Um, this definitely has that smell. We mentioned before with the barrel age, with the uh, barley wines, where you get kind of a earthy loam. This actually smells almost like um, fresh mushrooms, like unwashed fresh mushrooms. Kind of like a little bit like dirt. It's, in, in this beer, it, that smell is so strong, it's almost a little off-putting until you taste it. And then it's just delicious. You, you definitely get the, the... I can tell it's barrel-aged. If someone said, here, taste this, and you said... I, I, could, I could say, yes, that's barrel-aged. I could not tell you that it came from rye barrels over bourbon barrels. Maybe in some of the stouts you might get that kind of flavor profile, but I'm not getting that. I'm definitely getting a little bit of boozy, a little bit of syrupiness, um, but I'm not getting, I can't pick out that it's, it's bourbon over rye. As it is in general, they're pretty similar. Like if you drink um, bullet bourbon, or which oh, they also have a rye, or Breckenridge bourbon, which I've mentioned a number of times. Both of those bourbons, Bullet and Breckenridge, have a high rye content. So some of them almost taste like a rye when you're when you're drinking them. Ryes tend to be. I don't really want to get into that. That's that's kind of that's a whole different. It's a whole different ball of wax with with bourbons and what they taste like. And in bourbons, I think the the water has a huge amount to do with it and the 
the mash bill, the percentages and where the corn and rye and grains come from definitely really lend to the flavor. In beers, there's probably more components. You have what yeast is used, what hops are used, how much, what malts, um, how long are they roasted for, uh, what types of malts. I mean, there's, I think you probably have a broader range of ingredients in a beer than you do in a bourbon. I would say for sure you do because you have bourbon, you don't have light bourbon, dark bourbon. I mean, you have, you know, like in beers, you have IPAs, ales, and then each one of those has double IPAs, cream ales, uh, you know, and then you have stouts, porters, red ales, reds, browns. I mean, you have Gozes, Kolsch's, I mean, there's all sorts of different types of beer. This is very good. I am definitely enjoying this. Um, something I've seen for a while, you know, there's so much stuff available, and it's like, oh, it's not on my list, but on my list. And um, so kind of my goal now that I knocked out a bunch of beers that I enjoy drinking or have wanted to taste. So now my goal is to kind of keep up with the release calendars for a few breweries um, that do special releases. So I'll be doing the, the usual Bells, Boulevard, Founders, like Founders Kentucky Bourbon Stout just came out, um, or Kentucky Breakfast Stout, I should say, which is a barrel age, uh, barrel ma maple barrel age, something like that. So I'll definitely be reviewing that one. If someone poured this for me and I didn't see the bottle and they said, tell me everything you could about the beer. Similar to like a sommelier, who is a sommelier is a, um, someone who serves wine at a master level and they can, they, they can, in order to pass your sommelier test, you have to do a blind tasting of a wine. You have to name the vineyard, the type of grapes. The year it was produced. I mean, it's it's almost unfathomable the level that some of these guys are at. So if I was to do that with this beer, I would say this is a barley wine. That's just what uh, this tastes a lot like the this tastes a lot like the 2017 Bourbon County Barrel Aged Barley Wine. That's this tastes a lot like that. Color is even similar. And I'm guessing this color really comes from, uh, this is slightly cloudy. I'm guessing this color really comes from the, the well, you got some malt in there, that the kind of reddish, brownishness from the malt, but I'm guessing some of the color comes from the barrels. Like I mentioned, this is in Templeton rye barrels. I've had Templeton rye, I enjoy it. It's a, it's a good rye. Um, like, I, like I've mentioned before, the fact that some of these bigger breweries, you know, mention or go to their, go to certain lengths to get name brand bourbon or rye barrels, I think that's just marketing. I don't think there's a flavor difference in the beer at the end of the day. Or maybe unless it was really bad bourbon, but I, I don't think you're getting enough in the, I think you're, you're getting some of the wood, and then I think the booziness of the bourbon just kind of adds a, a different layer or, or or a filter over the whole beer. You know, kind of like putting uh, you know like rose colored glasses on the beer, or uh, you know a different. It's like when you cook. It's like when you cook with olive oil versus butter, you kind of get a different flavor that kind of follows through the whole. Like say you were to cook, um, say you were to cook mushrooms and onions in butter, then you would cook mushrooms and onions in olive oil. It would be pretty much the same thing, but you'd have a slightly different flavor profile. And I feel like that's what the little bit amount of bourbon that gets into the beer does. I've also heard the term wet barrels. So wet barrels referred to um, 
barrels that have very recently been evacuated of their bourbon or rye in this case and then they go right to the to the brewer and the brewer puts their beer in and and then it ages for however long I really just start sending out some emails to some of these brewers and ask some questions about you know some questions that have come up for me anyway on the channel uh, how much coffee goes into a coffee beer and how strong is it straight espresso is it is it beans is it and same thing with this like how, how, how long do they age the beer the rye ale in this case in the barrels before it's before it's ready to go pretty cool uh, bottle this is very Boulevard the tall skinny neck um, the labeling is, is very Boulevard they have a very clean look uh, it, again, kind of like six point I think they do a great job at consistency and marketing I actually got another special release or I guess it's actually a seasonal from Boulevard that we'll be trying soon um, it's called Flora Obscura and they have a short bottle and that's probably the first time I've seen a short bottle from Boulevard uh, maybe I'll keep this one next to it so I can get, I can show you the difference but yeah this is this is very cool uh, limited release 2018 release of the rye on rye I'm really enjoying this while I'm enjoying it so much let's give it a rating before that let me go, let me go let me, let me do a walk through the flavor so the smell is slight slight alcohol smell definitely boozy right off the initial nose and you get that kind of loam kind of like fresh mushrooms kind of smell like a, like a damp forest maybe some rotting wood The initial mouth feel is almost a little, a little, little initial mouth taste is a little bit sweet. There's definitely hints of vanilla and caramel. And that's the maltiness, I think, coming through. And the vanilla is probably the wood. Vanilla is definitely a flavor that I've noticed comes out of oak aging. And then the finish... maybe a hair dry I wouldn't say it's a dry finish but it's a hair dry it hangs on your tongue for about a second and then it slowly dissolves and goes away really nice finish really just kind of kind of rounds it out well I'm gonna give this a four and a quarter that I'm very impressed with this very impressed yeah they're, they're de definitely strong vanilla caramely notes in there this is good i i'm a i'm a fan and then as the channel progresses so i'll be curious to try this next year and maybe look back on this video and and compare my own notes which is me right now drinking this to next year's version the same, the same praise i'm giving it today That was great. Until next time. Cheers.